Hello everyone, today I would like to try and generate traffic jams and show you how they are entirely avoidable. Let's begin by creating some roads. Next we need some cars. Now because I'm lazy and I didn't want to hand draw the path that the car can drive in, I decided to make a full self-driving system so the cars would be able to navigate and adapt to all the roads. I quickly experienced tons of problems. Soon enough though, I did manage to get the first car going. And it was just working good enough to convince me that if I'll just put a little bit more work, it's all going to work. But I kept finding places like slopes with street lights that the cars just, yeah, did this. And because this is not exactly what I had in mind, and I already wasted two days trying to solve a problem that would take me one hour if I wouldn't try to solve it in a more efficient way, I decided to go back to square one and just draw the path for the cars. And after writing a small piece of code to make the cars follow the spline, we have cars and they are not glitching out of physics. And now the only thing left to do is to make the cars not want to hit each other. I just check how close is the car to the car in front of it using a ray, and then I just slow it down if it gets too close. And as you can see, this is enough to start seeing a traffic jam forming. So now we have everything we need to start simulating traffic jams. So I made two charts, one of them is to track the amount of overall cars in the simulation, and another one to track the amount of cars that are stuck in traffic. And then we can see how they correlate to each other to evaluate how good is the strategy of the drivers. We'll start with the simplest strategy, which is very similar to how a human drives. So just the cars are trying to go somewhere and they try not to hit other cars while they're going there. We can see that when there is a low amount of cars, uh, that there is little to no traffic jams, which is to be expected. It's interesting though, not very surprising that the relationship between the amount of cars and the amount of traffic jams is exponential. And I think the way I'll decide how one simulation compared to another is how many cars should exist so half of the cars would be stuck in traffic. So we, we can see that in about 190 cars, only 30 cars are stuck in traffic. So I want to see when half of the cars would be stuck. I never thought about it, but we can see clearly that traffic jams are a wave. A wave of slowness that propagates backwards and looks very similar to sound waves in air. We can see that in about 420 cars, we got to a point where it's very hard to get anywhere and half of the cars are completely standing. Now let's try a little bit of a different strategy and see how many cars would it take to get 50% stuck. Now let's implement a small change. The first time I heard about it is in this video of CGP Gray and link in the description. It's about a solution to traffic and the video states that if only every driver would try to stay in the middle between the car in front of it and the car behind it, traffic jams would not exist. So let's put this statement to the test in this simulation 
and see if it is true or not and if it is how much better it is than regular driving. To implement this behavior I created two arrays, one in front of the car and one in the back and by comparing the length of both of those rays until they hit another car we can determine if we need to slow the car or speed it up for the car to stay completely in the middle. I call this the CTFO algorithm for no particular reason. We can see that when the amount of cars is low, this way of driving actually introduces inefficiencies because we can see that some cars are actually slowing down to wait for the car behind them. So I think this is only efficient in traffic. So there is already a significant amount of cars on the road and we can see that they are handling it pretty good. It's flowing even though the cars are pretty densely packed. So at this point we can see some slowdown and a little bit of traffic jams even with this method, but when comparing this to the old method, this is so much better. At this point there is pretty much no more space on the roads, but still, the traffic is kind of flowing and more than half of the cars are still driving. And we can see that the reason it's starting now to really clog up is just because there is literally no more space. So we can see that at around 575 cars, this method also clogs up and more than half of the cars are standing. But I think if the roads were open, like the real world, then the difference between the old method and this method would be even more striking. This is because I think there is literally no more space on those roads without making some cars overlap. I wanted to experiment by adding a traffic light and I want to test how each method reacts. This specific traffic light is red for 5 seconds and then green for another 10. We can see that the performance of the first method where the cars are not trying to stay in the middle between the cars in front of them and behind them, it's not working particularly well with the traffic light. And we can see that each time the traffic light turns red, it creates a wave of slowness that propagates backwards and creates multiple points that the car needs to wait as if it waited for the traffic light, even before it got there. And of course it only gets worse when we have more cars. Now let's compare it with cars driving in the CTFO algorithm, which means they just try to keep the same distance between the car in front and the car in the back. And we can see that even when there is a significant amount of cars driving, the slowness does not propagate much farther from the traffic light.
but I know what you're thinking. Maybe it is better to drive that way and less traffic jams would form, but it wouldn't matter if I'll do it, because nobody else would do it. And you might be right, I actually have no idea. But I want to test that. So I want to do three tests. One of them, the just the original simulation for control. Another one where only 10% of the cars have the CTFO algorithm, where they drive properly. And another one where we only 30%. So I want to test if only few people are driving well, how does it influence the whole system? Maybe a lot, maybe a little. I genuinely don't know. Let's test it. Okay, just watching from the start, it seems like there isn't a lot of difference between the 0 and 10%, but the 30% is consistently doing better. By the way, you can see that I colored the roof of the CTFO cars with black, so all the black roof cars are the cars that are driving well, and all the fully red cars are the cars that are normal. I'm actually really disappointed that the 10% is not doing better than the 0% because I wanted to tell you that even if only you and a couple of other people would drive well, it would make the whole system better, but we can see that we actually need a significant portion of the drivers to change their behavior for any change to really occur in the whole system. So the 0 and 10% is approaching full capacity, um, which means that almost half of the cars are not, no longer driving, and the 30% is just behind them. Yeah, so the initial findings of the simulation still hold at this stage. Um, so if we want to see no traffic jams, um, we need to share the video with like 70% of the world. Um, yeah, so uh, do it and then, and then we don't have traffic jams. So as you can see, I have a really small YouTube channel and YouTube is not really exposing me to new people. So in case you are new here, I want to tell you about a few of my other videos because there is a very small chance that YouTube would tell you about them. And I'm really proud of them and they just get no views. So the first one is a video I made about me training an AI to predict how many views a video will get by inputting the title and the thumbnail of the video. I think it's really interesting, you should watch it. And another video I'm really proud of is a video about emergence. It's about five really cool simulations. I'll show you a few clips right now on the screen. And I wouldn't tell you much about it because I just think you would much rather just watch it and, and you'll enjoy more that way. And if you want to help my channel grow, the first thing I would ask you is just to comment because it gives me more motivation to make more videos. So comments are the best way. And you can like and subscribe if you like my content and you like uh, YouTube suggesting more of it to you in the future, you can do it. And enjoy the last part of the video where you are the car and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.